Alrighty, in today's video, we're going to be looking at how to replace a wheel cylinder uh, without removing any of your shoes or your springs. So guys, right here is the wheel cylinder. <clears throat> so to remove it, uh, there's uh, going to be here on the back side. I can get you guys to give you yeah. There's going to be these are the two holding bolts. This is your bleeder valve, and then this is a brake. This is the brake line that goes to it. Um, good thing to do is to go ahead and make sure that's free before you move any further. Uh, PB Blaster helps with this. I'm probably going to spray some WD-40 on it and let it sit here for just a minute. Before I continue with this, but yeah, definitely use WD-40 on this because the last thing you want is to strip this bleeder out so then you can't do anything and you're just stuck. Alright guys, so I've already taken these out. i got brake fluid dripping on the ground here. Don't worry about it if you drip it on the ground, you can wash it away with, with uh, water. I saw a guy in another video who pinched off his rubber hoses and vice grips. But this one, that's a parking brake cable, I don't even know why I'm pointing at that. But this one is a full metal brake line. doesn't have a rubber hose attached to it. But I don't recommend doing that anyway, because all it takes is for one burr to come out inside of that rubber hose, and you'll have issues with breaking. You'll have, it'll feel like a, a frozen caliper or locked up wheel cylinder, so I don't recommend that. Um, as you can see, this thing is now about ready to come out. I probably have to give it a couple licks with, uh, with a hammer or something to make it come loose. But yeah, I already took those out. I will show you how I did it. So I have two screwdrivers here. I took the first one, and... Um, locked it in here and pried this backwards then I use the other screwdriver to manipulate it out I'll have a time lapse of it on the other side um, where, where I do it but that's how you do it without removing any of the springs so you don't even have to remove these top two because uh, they can be quite tough if, if you've never done a brake job before so anyways guys we're gonna go ahead and remove this now I'm gonna have to give it a couple licks with a hammer to get it to come loose but it should come right off alright so it's about a fight and a half to get that thing in and out I will show you it more in depth on the other side, but um, basically guys, after you get it all off, you're going to have to bleed this wheel cylinder, and so right now I'm going to tell you how to do that with two people, because, uh, so, uh, well one person bleeding is uh, kind of hard to set up, there's a lot of noise because we're just taking off the wheel on the other side, go ahead and get ready to, ready to rock and roll, um, so yeah, you can, do it. I didn't remove any springs, and I will show you on the other side. It got so much smoother. All right, guys. So these are the things that we pulled out of the old wheel cylinder. Um, you can buy you can buy these new, uh, but. I didn't, so I'm going to be reusing these. Basically, get yourself a wire wheel. You don't have to use a drill. I just like to speed things up. And, um, uh, if it'll work, and then just turn it off. They don't have to be perfect. Just get most of the rust and debris off so that you don't mess up your new seals. As you can see, that one is relatively clean. It ain't going to be perfect, but that's what the old one looks like. So, in comparison, pretty good. So, the other side was actually a lot harder to get out and in than this one was. This one I pretty much just like set in there, tapped a couple times with a hammer, and it fell in. Um, these really aren't that bad. This side, I think, because the springs are in a different location, this thing fell in easier. A couple things I recommend is uh, getting a screwdriver like this. Opening this up, 
Hey, uh, Vic, I need you to do one thing for me. I'm going to need you to uh, hold that light right there. Hold that light right here so I can see. Yeah. So, uh, so opening these shoes up, can you pull the light down a little bit so they can... There we go. So, uh, as you can see, there's like a little groove that this sets in. And uh, get it inside that groove. And then don't let that happen. Um, and then you're good to go. This is kind of dangerous, so make sure that your hands are away from it. That way if it does slip up like that, you don't kill yourself. So that's why I recommend using screwdrivers. And not your fingers. So be smart about it. Use two screwdrivers. Unless you want to buy the special tools, which work way better. I just did not for this job. So I'm stuck with what I got. Alright guys, so uh, that's how they're supposed to sit in there. After you get your new wheel cylinders in. A good way to check is to get your drum on and then have somebody press the brake um, and then check it but first we have to bleed it so we still have to hook up our lines and all that back here uh, I don't know why I said that now we still have to hook up our, all of our lines and stuff we have not done that yet I did go ahead and bolt it in I do recommend bolting it in first so that whenever you fight those things in there the wheel cylinder is not trying to fall out on you um, so yeah guys alright guys so now it's kind of hard to see but if you don't have a a flare knot wrench with the right size on it Get yourself a socket with the right size on it, and um, go ahead and uh, loosen up that new bleeder screw. Alright, so we got the new wheel cylinders installed. Um, I just really, the main focus of this video was to show that you can put a wheel cylinder in without without taking any of the brake components. Um, it was kind of tough getting it over the hub flange, but if you can get it in there just right, then it, it, it'll see. It's, it's a little, you have to finesse a little bit, but you can't get it in there. Some people take off the top springs to do it. I did it. I just wanted to prove that you could that you didn't have to do that. Because, you know, a lot of people don't have the tools at their house to do brake drums. And it's kind of hard with some of the hand tools. I've used the special tools. But it's kind of hard with, like, a screwdriver, a pair of vice grips, and a box-in wrench to do it. It is possible. Uh, Chris Fix has a video about that, actually, I think. And he does a good job with it. But some, some people, whenever you're first starting out, I know it's hard for me to do it, even with the special tools. So, anyways, guys, I want to thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a like. Subscribe to the channel, and I will see you next time. I got a new wheel. <laughs> oh, I like <laughs> Wonder how fast we can burn through this little 200 hour battery. Probably pretty quick. <laughs>